My brothers and sisters in Christ, certainly it is a joy, a privilege, and an honor that you are back with us here for our weekly Bible study. We thank God for you. We love you. We appreciate you. Please share. Please follow. Uh, please subscribe. Please start a watch party. And please pray. In fact, will you pray with me? Gracious God, we come to you tonight thanking you for who you are and all that you have done. We pray for this nation in the midst of its turmoil. We pray for this world in the midst of this pandemic. God, we pray for the brokenhearted. We pray for that person who is watching that needs to know God. Lord, have your way and minister to us in such a way that we embrace and become excited about the kingdom of God. God, your kingdom is so powerful, so wonderful, and it has changed lives in such a way that we celebrate you, we honor and adore you. God, you are worthy to be praised. God, we give you glory. We magnify you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, my brothers and sisters, I'm wearing this shirt because Jesus is certainly bigger than Sunday. God is bigger than Wednesday. God is such an important part of our everyday life. And so we encourage you to stay in God's word. Be blessed. Good evening. I am Reverend Chambers, Associate Minister of the New Hope Baptist Church, where there is no hope like New Hope. And Pastor Jameson McLaughlin is the pastor. Tonight, I will be con be hosting the uh, midweek Bible study, and we will continue on the topical subject of parables of grace. And tonight, our journey continues in Matthew 13, verses 45 and 46. I will repeat that. Matthew, verses 45 and 46 of chapter 13 and it reads as thus again the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls when he found one of great value he went away and sold everything he had and bought it tonight we will be dealing with only those two uh, verses, but as you study those two verses, we will find out that it's a lot in just those two verses. First of all, the meaning of this parable is just about the same as verse 44, which reads, uh, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When man found it, he hid it again, and then this joy went and sold all that he all he had and bought that field. And as we look at verse 45, we see the very first word is again. And when I see that word, anytime I see that word in scripture, I always look for what happened before. And as we look at what happened before, uh, after again, you see the same words of the beginning of verse 44, which is the kingdom of heaven is like. So that tells me that Jesus had to repeat another parable that maybe the disciples could uh, understand better. Because as we know from verse 20, I'm sorry, from verse 36, we find out that Jesus went in and it was only him and his disciples for the uh, next four parables. So therefore, we know that he was talking only to his uh, disciples at this time. And if he was talking to only his disciples at this time, we know that he wants his par his disciples to fully understand what he was trying to say. Because he said that those who have ears to hear, let them hear what thus saith the Lord. 
So therefore, we see the kingdom of heaven is like in verse 44. And then we see the kingdom of heaven is like in verse 45. But in verse 45, he changes it up a little. He says it is like a merchant. A merchant. It begins with again. So I'm going to tell you this again. But this time I'm going as a merchant. So Jesus talked about what heaven is like. But maybe the disciples didn't fully understand. This time Jesus is talking about a merchant man trying to find good pearls, expensive pearls. When anyone get pearls, they want the real thing. They want real pearls. They don't want the ones that someone have rejected or anything that like that. They want high quality pearls. So Jesus is comparing heaven to some of his disciples who are, are familiar with what is going on here on earth. He is uh, comparing it to a merchant man. A merchant man, we always find that in scripture, some say uh, a man who seeks the truth, the merchant man. Uh, he uh, is compared to uh, selling different goods and everything in the biblical time. Some say merchant men represent men who seek the truth, men who seek the truth and find Jesus, the priceless pearl. This is what we will be talking about today. Men who seek the truth and find Jesus as the great pearl. Then he sells all he had to get this one great pearl, as the disciples did when they followed Jesus. As if we go back through our scripture, we will find that the disciples put down everything that they had and they followed Jesus. Jesus said, come, and they did. How many of us that Jesus tells us to come and we do as thus saith the Lord? Some of us have problems with that, which there are some times that I have problems with that. So I know that you have problems with that. But we have to be all about Jesus. We have to go and seek and look like this merchant man did. So therefore, this merchant man is, is, is like the disciples in a way. He's going, he's seeking a pearl, which is his commodity. Okay, as, let's look at uh, the merchant man for a while. And then we will compare the merchant man to one seeking Jesus and heavenly things. So. The first point I want to do is I want to let you know what a merchant man is. A merchant man is one that trades or deals in goods of this world. And he makes it his chief business. So a man that seeks after heavenly things, trades or deals in spiritual things, and makes religion or his salvation his chief business. So any merchant man you see, he has a special commodity. So in scripture, this merchant man, he is looking for pearls. And you know, Paul said to Timothy in 1 Timothy 4.15, Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all men. So that tells us that we have to let people know who we are when we are saints. So 
Let's look at another thing a merchant man does. A merchant man sometimes trades and deals in things of great worth. And here in this parable, it is expressed because he is looking for fine pearls, not any pearl, but he is looking for the fine pearls, the goodly pearls in some scriptures will recall. But what is more valuable than Jesus Christ? Is it silver? Is it gold? Or is it the goodly pearl? It is the goodly pearl, the fine pearl, the best pearl of all pearls is the man named Jesus. Let's look at one more. A merchant sets his heart, his mind, and thoughts upon his merchandise. For instance, a merchant that's looking for good pearls, he's always thinking about where he can get his best pearls from. He's always thinking about what's my next move to get my best pearls. So, I mean that he prefers these things. And in good, honest pursuits, after them, above all upon earth. Some of us put earthly things above everything else upon this earth. So was this merchant man. He was looking for the best pearl that he could find. He has set aside everything that he could get he had in order to search for this pearl. So a spiritual Christian sets his heart and his chiefest thought upon heavenly, heavenly, I'm sorry, thing. He sets his affection on the things above and not on the things upon this earth. His whole heart and mind is set upon Jesus, the rock, the savior, the hard pearl, the unbreakable. As we know, pearls are strong. They are unbreakable. Force can't just crush them easily. And sometimes merchants, they venture into the sea. And they run many dangerous error in seeking a good pearl. And after the rich merchandise, both by storm, rock, sand, and pirates during that time of Jesus' life. So, a crew pushed her. Aren't we exposed to great difficulties and we go in many dangerous places, some seen and unseen, but we're there. Some we know we're going into dangerous places and we have to seek Jesus in order to build a hedge of protection around us when we go. So we venture out into a visible and sometimes invisible protection, profession of religion on the sea of this world. What storms of reproaches, temptations, and persecution are we often exposed to? So, a merchant, if he knows not what his pearls are, he may soon be cheated by false counterfeit pearls. So many of us, we are cheated because we do not know who 
the person of Christ is. We do not know who the true Savior is. We believe in false gods. We believe in other ways around. But we need to search for the one and only, the great pearl, the great pearl we need to be searching for. And none other but the best. And the best pearl that we could ever find is Jesus the Christ. A merchant goes far and beyond to search for their treasure. So, a spiritual person, we go far and beyond. We, we look to heaven. We look to that beautiful place of heaven. So this is what Jesus was saying when he says that, he, when he uh, used the analogy of a merchant. When a merchant go far and, and, and beyond. So we as Christians, we look to heaven, which is far and beyond. A merchant has his correspondence in those far countries to which he trades, who receives his merchandise and make return. So we as Christians, we have our blessed correspondent, who is Jesus Christ, the great pearl. We can call him anytime, morning, noon, or night, because he manages our concern. He manages our heartaches and our disappointment and everything that comes our way. He manages all our concern because he can address our correspondence. He can, we, all we have to do is pick up the telephone. 24 7 and he's right there to call to for us to call and he is our correspondent a merchant know that he must attend seminars this is a big one he needs to meet where other people gather so that he can hear. He needs to be where other great merchants are. So he can hear. He can learn how to be a better searcher for pearl. He needs to learn how to sell and buy goods. Moreover, if we neglect and don't attend our seminar, if we neglect and don't attend, we will have a sacrifice and we will not be as vigilant toward Christ as we have been. For example, during this pandemic, if we had not continued to study the word of God, to attend parking lot church, to uh, view video talking about Jesus Christ, we will soon be stray away from him. So therefore we need to keep searching. We need to attend seminars, which some of them we can't attend now, so God knows that. But we need to Keep abreast on the study of the word of God. And lastly, about 
a merchant. We need to give God our best. A merchant takes care to keep his books and accounts very well. They are often with the accountant. They know whether they are gaining, whether they are losing, or whether they are on even keel. That they may see the good end of their affairs, that they are not cheated, and thus also a saint. We need to do the same thing. We need to cast up our accounts. We need to give God our best. We need to make sure that we are giving God our best. Sometimes we need to go back soul searching and see what we can do to make it better if we are not doing what we are supposed to do. Secondly, we must merchandise to the world. And no merchandise is like the spiritual merchandise. So therefore, I have given you a little bit about a merchant. So let's look at the pearl, Jesus Christ. Okay. In order for a pearl to be made, it's born out of suffering. And Jesus suffered for us. A pearl is born out of an oyster. It takes a speck of sand or a parasite that enters the oyster. The oyster is a living thing. So I can imagine that it hurt. I can imagine that when that speck of sand got into the oyster, I can, I can imagine how it hurt that oyster because when a speck of sand or something get into our eye, it is very uncomfortable and sometimes very painful. So, that oyster, when the speck of sand gets in, it protects itself. The oyster secrete a substance called the mother of pearl or the nacre to surround the speck of pearl, to surround the speck of sand, I'm sorry. The secretion around the speck of sand slowly forms a pearl. The same is true with the believer and the church. Both are born out of suffering and the death of Jesus Christ. As Christians, we must seek the pearl of great price. Who is Jesus Christ? We must remember that pearls are very bad valuable. They possess a splendid brightness. So therefore, we need to be show work our Christ. Pearls are a rich ornament. Ornament, I'm sorry. It's a part of Christ. We are a part of Christ, whose wear well from them are counted the honorable of mankind. Yet the pain from that pebble that that oyster had, the pain that Jesus had for us, it has grown to make us. Christian say so that we can look to heaven so that we can be one of the great pearls so that we can go and sell everything just to buy that one great pearl who is Jesus Christ we can't buy him but I must tell you 
We must sell out of our prejudices, like which has gone with George Floyd these past two weeks. We must sell out our self-righteousness, being always right at all times. And we must sell out our sinful pleasures, our sinful pleasures. Sometimes they are not easy to sell. But thank God with his anointing, with the power of Jesus Christ, he can help us with our sinful pleasures and our sinful temptations. And then we must accept Jesus Christ, the great pearl, as our personal savior. And this will be a joyful one, an enriching one. And we won't have to worry about purchasing anything else on this earth as long as we have Jesus Christ. A purchase that we will never forget. Once we go find, once we go seeking the great pearl, the pearl of great price, while seeking pearls, we may find pearls as a symbol of truth and life. Men seek truth and life. We seek it and such things as the flesh, such things as science, anything that's not true to God. But there is only one pearl that is priceless. Only one pearl that is worth more than the world itself. The pearl is Jesus Christ himself. Thank you and to God be the glory. And I hope that this has blessed someone in some way in the name of Jesus. And thank you God for this day. Amen.